Welcome to the Nerds Podcast number 654. This episode of the Nerds Podcast is brought to you by Tales from the Borderlands. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was playing that game, and I think I heard a voice that was familiar. Did it sound like this? That's no, just my voice. Uh, was That's just my voice. But uh, you're in it, too. Um, I may or may not. Are you Claptrap? I am not Claptrap. Because that'd be pretty cool. No. He's hilarious. I am. Have you met Claptrap? No. That guy's awesome. He, I we don't. We should have claptrap on the podcast. He records in a separate like. What he's a very prima famous. donna. He's very famous because he was part of the series no before good. I came in, so it wasn't you just know. Big like, dicking you. With he his did, robot he totally dick. big dicked me. Uh, I came in as Vaughn, Reese's best friend. Uh, episode two of Tales from the Borderland just came out. It's available to download now on Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation Three. Uh, three and four, PC, Mac, iOS, Android. There's the the remaining three episodes will be released to download over the coming months. Uh, we're already recording episode three, oh. so uh, it's been so much fun doing that. Doing doing Tales from the Borderlands. Those are I always wanted to be in games. a video game, and uh, is this and your I'm, first one? It is my first one. Oh. Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's exciting. Were they gentle? By the way, they've been great. It's so much fun to work with, and and like uh, and they're really good comedy people. Yeah. So it's been it's, it's a been high really bar. They're, they're um, good over there. The, just in case you don't know, Tales takes place after the event scene in Borderlands 2, um, and so therefore also after the events of Borderlands, the pre-sequel. And, uh, you know, Telltale makes Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us, Game of Thrones, uh, which is also out. And then this is in partnership with Gearbox. Mm-hmm. Our friend Randy Pitchford. Uh, oh, Randy. Randy and Christy Pitchford, who are awesome, awesome, awesome human Delightful beings. Delightful human beings. Uh, former Nerds Podcast guest, Randy Pitchford. And so uh, it's, a, it's a super fun, great game, and people have been very nice about it. It's been getting great reviews, which makes me happy, and I've not been torn to shreds by uh, nerd gaming sites. So I, I appreciate this. Give it time. No, shut your face. No, it's already. <laughs> it's happened, just not about, just not about Tales. So... Uh, Tales from the Borderlands, available now. Uh, check it out. Dick Episode plugs. two now, right now. Uh, let's go to the Nerdist Community Corkboard. Yeah. What do you got, Katie? Uh, well, as you guys know, the two of the guys from Broken Lizard have a podcast on our network, Kevin Who and Steve. Who broke a lizard? That's and terrible. Today, They're defenseless creatures. <laughs> today they launched their Indiegogo for Super Troopers 2. What? What? Yeah. So right meow? See, right meow. Literally, sure. they're, they're like, their slogan is, the time is meow. Fantastic. <laughs> I think they're only trying to raise like two million bucks. Yeah. Too. So if you guys want to donate and help out and see a Super Troopers 2, go to supertroopers2movie.com, and that's the number two. Good. And you can donate right here, yeah. right now. There is no other place. And the perks are awesome, too. Like, you get to go to the premiere. Do or... you get to meet Jesus Jones? No. Okay. Well, there's still well, time. Good luck with we that. can add more things. Yeah, I mean, you know, they could trying to raise money for a movie if you're not going to introduce someone to Jesus Jones. Yeah. Anyway, um, I want to introduce Jesus Jones to January Jones. <laughs> oh, my God. Find out they're actually siblings. Jesus H. Jones! Oh, we should put that scene in the movie. Where Jesus in January... Well, Jesus Jones isn't a person. It's just a band name. I thought it was a guy. Mm-mm. I thought it was like, a, this is a Jamiroquai situation where I've been confused for a long time. No, it's, there's not a Jamiroquai person. Well, I mean... JK is the... In our heart... Okay. It's one guy they morph together to who's wearing a hat. What's your community corkboard uh, entry? I got there's a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Tommy Williamson. But yeah, there is. Uh, and he's uh, been a special effects guy for 25 years now. Good job, and man. And he is uh, retiring from that industry soon, and he's starting a website called BrickNerd.com. It's already up. And he is retiring to focus on using all of his special effects skills to do movies using exclusively Legos. Fucking awesome. Like, that's the way to retire if you're going to retire. What is his name again? His name is Tommy Williamson. Tommy Williamson. Williamson, good job, man. He's a rad dude. I mean, that guy, you know, like someone retires and is like, oh, I guess I'm not going to do anything now. But this could be a whole other oh, yeah. amazing I went to his, his website life. and it's super inspiring. I'm like, oh, when I am his age, like, I, this is, this is what I hope I have this much, like, drive to keep doing stuff. You're going to get really to his cool. age a lot sooner if you don't quit smoking, you son of a bitch. All right. This episode is The Amazing Randy, James Randy, who uh, I've watched my entire life. He's been making stuff since before I was born. What's weird, though, he's been watching you, too. Oh, my... He could. That's his ultimate magic trick. He tricked me, yeah. That, like, he made me think that he was watching me. But uh, uh, J- James Randi, um, magician, skeptic, uh, all-around brilliant man, uh, poopoor of, of fake sorcery. I found out after this podcast my favorite quote of his, which is that he said, when I die, I want my a- be, myself to be cremated, my ashes to be blown in the eyes of Yuri Geller. Yeah, so his movie is called An Honest Liar, and it's a documentary about truth and deception and uh, the life of James Randi, and who also kind of dealt with truth and deception in his own part. I mean, the, the documentary is fucking fantastic. Um, you should see it. Uh, Adam Savage is in it, Penn and Teller, Bill Nye. 
um, uh, Davy Pena. Uh, it's it's a good. It's a really That's good, a good solid group. It's really interesting to watch all the stuff. And when he has clear cut evidence that someone is duping people, that people will still find a way to go. No, but this time he's not dupe. You know, like it is. I don't know how he didn't. I, well, he doesn't really. He must have ripped all his own hair out. Like that's. I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened to him. But he is a lovely, lovely guy, and uh, was a phenomenal guest, and very open and very cool, and true to his true to his word of being honest. Like he he was a he was. I was honored to meet the guy, and uh, I don't know. It's just there's some people where you you know they just bury inside. You, you know, like they're just part of your molecules because you watched them a lot when you were when you were growing up. And it's kind of crazy that we get to do this thing where we get to meet those people. Um, this episode was also brought to you by Crunchyroll, which is, uh, if you're an anime fan, you should go to Crunchyroll because using, if you go to crunchyroll.com slash nerdish, you're going to get 30 days of free anime with no ads. That's premium count for a month. Crunchyroll is created by fans of anime for fans of anime. It's got the newest and most current episodes straight from Japan. And it's an unlimited collection of the most popular anime series. And it's all professionally subtitled. If you're an anime fan, I don't know how or why you would be able to justify going anywhere else or not being a part of Crunchyroll. Uh, they get the latest shows just one hour after they air in Japan. That is how big of fans they are. They've made insane... That's, as a long-time anime fan, insane. I mean, that's just basically like, like waiting for a different time zone. for like have oh, to wait hour. years and years and years to get stuff a lot of times. And you'd, 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 have to go, you'd have to go to places like uh, Cinephile or, or, or like Sweet Talk a Guy to Suncoast. <laughs> <laughs> they've got all the classics like uh, One Piece, Sword Art Online, Naruto, but they've also got off some new shows like uh, Kuroko's Basketball, Parasite, Fairy Tale... Browse all their huge selection, um, and if it, you know what, start with something like Attack on Titan. Yeah, like watch the anime version of Attack on Titan first, and then uh, and then get your Crunchyroll.com slash Nerdist premium account free for a month, and uh, and check it out. Zero ads, zero ads, Kyle. No ads. That's the same. You just said what I said. I know. I was agreeing with you. I appreciate that. Thank you for agreeing by using a different word. There's got to be a name for that. Oh, we should invent a word for that. Are we going to call it crunchy rolling? Yeah. So if you crunchy roll someone, you're agreeing with them, but you're using a different word. Yeah. And getting a 30-day free subscription to Crunchy Roll by using Nerdist. Here's Nerdist Podcast number 654 with the amazing Randy. Now entering Nerdist.com. Happening? Okay. I think we're doing it. I got the yellow microphone for some reason. <laughs> it matches your sweatshirt. Yeah, okay. We want it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very thoughtful. It's a mentalism trick. Oh, yes. Uh, he was just telling some pretty cool stories about uh, Johnny Carson. What, 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 what? Yes, yes. I'm sorry, since I just got here. Can you continue with the uh, Johnny Carson stories? Well, then I said to John. <laughs> so I says to him, I says. No, we were just talking about the fact that he used to smoke all the way through the programs. Yeah, what what year did that stop? Because he said to the end. But but oh yeah, he did it until the day he left the air. Really? Oh, I thought he had quit. No, no, he had a cigarette down there. The prop man would come out every break, boom, 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 change the cigarette, exhaust fan, the whole thing. And, oh my uh, gosh! Well, one of the sequences in the film. Uh, you'll you'll see him. I saw it. There. I saw the movie. And and you will see if if you watch carefully, you'll see him doing this, looking up at the monitor to see when it switches to me. <laughs> so at, at which point down. he would go for the cigarette and do this. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and then put it back in the holder, and the exhaust fan would pick it up, and he'd go right back into the same pose. That is exactly. a, that is dedication yeah, to... Oh yeah, and the audience would be told when they were all seated at the very beginning, before anyone came out on stage, that Mr. Carson will be smoking during the... But please don't pay any attention to it or make any comments on it. And the audience, uh, a little surprised, you know. But then they would see it happening and whoa. I mean, the, the amount of power that that man wielded... Oh, well, yes, of course. That, that was, well, he was a different time. He was, yes, of course, he was major... And I understand that there's a book out now about uh, Johnny that is not too flattering. They, they 
Yeah. We're, we're hey. picking you guys up on the microphones, by the way. I'm sorry. Of course. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. So, and they, <laughs> yes, we, yes, we've been rolling. So lean closer, yes. No. That's all right. But they, uh, they apparently are saying some pretty nasty stuff about Johnny, and I never saw any of what they're describing at all. Oh, you didn't see? Oh, no, I, 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 I did, what, 23 programs or something with him over the years. Uh, from the, almost from the moment that Steve Allen dropped the thing. But uh, I, I didn't see any of that in Johnny at all. In fact, after his, uh, after his retirement, he used to call me at my office, and we'd have uh, interesting chat. He'd always start out by, by apologizing. Uh, I don't want to take your time. How could you <laughs> take any of my Johnny, time I'm real busy would... right now. Yeah, what do you yeah, need? Yeah, what's up? What's up? Quickly, quickly. <laughs> let me have it. But he would always apologize like that. And then he'd, he'd talk for three or four minutes and he'd say, but I'm keeping you. John, it's okay. I've got the time, you know. What did he want to talk about? Just Well, he was astonished at the fact that he thought we'd wiped out Peter Popoff, the evangelist. Right. Who was doing this phony stuff on uh, TV. And we did for about 48 hours or so because he changed the name of his ministry. Right. He stayed in the same place. We just changed the sign on the ministry and the way it could be accessed. And uh, he would say, I just saw Popoff on television again. And I'd say, John, he's the unsinkable rubber duck. How many times do we have to discuss it? So he'll always be there you know, because there'll always be someone who will believe. And enough people to send him the money. Now, I don't know whether he still uses the same technique, because we exposed it. We blew it apart on the show altogether. Yeah, which is, by the way, so I did, I did see the movie. It's fantastic. And the whole, the whole sort of runner, at least from what I gathered, and you can tell me if this is not true, but it's um, how, it, the, but the whole movie is about deception, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in many forms, both professionally and personally, from many sources, from many from many sources, and the willingness that people have to want to believe something, need to believe, need to believe something. That's, that's the the verb there. Need to believe because they really do need it. They don't just want it; they need it, and they get to depend on it, and it it forms the basis for how they exist in their in their lives. I mean, it's it. One of the most interesting things, and I remember this. I'm, I'm old enough to have seen you on a bunch of shows, through, like like some of the shows in the in the documentary. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing a lot of those. <laughs> and yeah. so, what's really interesting to me is how violent people will get when, like, why why do uh, why do you think people are so aggressive towards? A reasonable someone coming up with a reasonable argument, going, "Well, this is what Uri Geller did, and these are the steps." And people going, "Like, how fucking dare you!" Like, like it's so yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and you're and you're you're just saying, "No, I, I'm not saying that this stuff isn't possible. I'm just saying exactly that in this case, it doesn't like these are this seems to be the evidence." And then have people because they need so badly that's so much a part of their core belief system. Yes, and there's the, the other class of people too. We in, in many cases we would accost people in the audience who had been up on the stage during a faith healer's uh, session someplace in, in a large theater or a, a studio and we'd see that they had not been healed on the stage as they purported you know, throw away their canes and whatnot and stagger off stage <laughs> barely making it uh, and we'd accost them and say but you weren't really healed on this stage well, it's because I didn't have enough faith to see. Oh, and they'd yes. be walking up with two canes and telling you this sort of thing. And then they'd start to walk away from it, and then they'd turn and say, but I still believe. Right. They want, it, want to be ass- you to be assured that they still believe that the Reverend so-and-so out there on the stage had the power and was talking directly with God. What an amazing scam that basically no matter, that even if you fail, that the people still blame themselves because they didn't give enough money That's or because right. they didn't believe They didn't enough. have enough faith. I remember seeing a, I feel like I saw a documentary with you maybe 20 or 25 years ago, but but the... I was younger then. You were a little bit younger then, yeah. <laughs> but it had something... So just a little bit. Yeah. But it had something to do with, and maybe I'm misremembering this, but... Did you, did, I thought you said you, you did tarot readings in college and you started giving people the opposite uh, of what the readings said and people would still find a connection point. No, that's someone else. It, that wasn't you? It's probably Ray Hyman. Okay. Uh, professor Ray Hyman, who's a psych- professor of who's psychology. In the, who's in yeah. the documentary as yeah. well. Yeah. 
Indeed, yes. And he did uh, readings of exactly the opposite, and it worked just as well. Because people read it. Now, uh, there is an example there of me appearing before a classroom uh, in Florida where I read out, uh, and I, no, pardon me, I didn't appear on the, there were two programs, uh, one week and then the second week. The first week, the instructor came out to tell his classroom of maybe 35, 40 a student sitting in a small classroom saying that uh, next week we're going to have horoscopes cast for each and every one of you here by a famous astrologer. And they oh, are yeah, all very enthusiastic about that, you see. So you give us uh, your date and, if you know, the time of birth and uh, the location, geographical location, and had it slips of paper and they all were handed in. And next week, uh, James Randall will be here. And I was, this is where I lived in Florida, as a matter of fact, and some of them had heard that I lived there. And uh, he'll hand out the horoscopes and then ask you your opinion of them. And uh, sure enough, when they came back the, the next week, uh, I was there and I said to uh, good afternoon and whatnot, handed out, but they had their names on the individual envelopes. And I said, now open up your envelopes and read the horoscope. And then I want you to score, I, I think I said between zero and five, zero being no likelihood whatsoever, this being correct, and five being top rank. And so I handed them out. And then you could see people. I, I'm sitting there in front of the classroom looking down at these four rows of seats here. And people are saying, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, getting all excited and such. I said, okay, uh, let's see the votes by hands. Well, almost all of them were five right at the top. <laughs> Some, A few were four. There were no threes, twos, ones, or zeros. No. They, very satisfactory, in other words. Then I said, okay, now everybody hand yours to the person behind you and take the one from the person in front of you. And the person at the end of the row come up and give it to the front row. Okay, they all did that. They said, now I want you to read these.